All right. Well, I have uh, actually quite a bit um, to discuss today, and I do want to leave time for any questions uh, or discussions that uh, those of you on the call uh, would like to raise. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started with just some of our standard background uh, material here. Um, again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is, um, what is this now, Mara? I think our sixth, maybe it's our seventh uh, Testing the Limits uh, webinar. Um, going a little bit later than we typically do after the last uh, IEEE uh, 802 interims, um, or plenaries interims in this case. If you're not familiar with our laboratory, the UNH Interoperability Lab uh, has been working with the networking and data storage and related industries uh, since 88. Uh, we're located just north of Boston in uh, Durham, New Hampshire at the University of New Hampshire. And specifically to Ethernet, we've been working with that since Penn Base T in the beginning of our organization and TSN since uh, the early days of residential Ethernet some 17 years ago. So certainly uh, hope we can address any questions or interests uh, in these spaces and related. Um, I'm not sure if Jason's actually going to be able to join us today, but I'll be able to cover um, some of the 802.3 SPE uh, activities. And if we can't cover it this round, we'll certainly catch it on the next update in two months. But I certainly will update on various timing activities that have occurred in the past uh, a few months here that may be of interest. So to that end, I hope to do a very brief update on some of the interim activities, talk to our upcoming 10 base T1S plug fest, um, update you in general on our 10 base activities. Yes, we started with 10 base T 34 odd years ago and we're still testing variants of 10 base T, including the original um, these many years later. Um, I'll also give a short update about ISPCS, a few other industry updates, but also some interesting work related to um, a new standard potentially for a time card, as well as some activities around White Rabbit. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, I'll give a brief overview. Um, trying to keep as much time as we can for discussions. Um, so we'll, we'll see if I can get through this. Again, feel free to type into uh, the, I believe we have a Q&A session active. If you have questions that come up, um, we can come back to those and uh, I can try to address them. Or of course, you can take the mic when we hit the Q&A session. So I just have a very short um, summary from uh, my takeaways from my participation in the 802.1 interim that GE Research hosted. Um, it was a hybrid meeting, so I unfortunately had to participate remotely. Um, a couple things you may uh, be of, of keen interest on the 802.1 DG profile, this is the automotive profile. There's continued work towards advancing that beyond the draft 1.4 status that they're at at the moment. Um, some continued discussion of exactly how 1588 or GPP will be used. Um, some discussion about whether announced messages are necessary. That continues to be one of the focal points for that group's meeting. Um, there's, there's other activity, I can't summarize it all, but uh, there is a uh, more um, technical discussions starting around the SAE and IEEE uh, aerospace profile for TSN. Um, of note here on the second bullet here, uh, the 6802 effort um, has, as of the most recent meeting on the 11th, because they meet, in addition to the interims, they meet every two weeks to try to address the huge volume of comments that they had. Um, they finally have completed the, that volume of comments for draft 1.4. Um, they will continue to meet uh, with an ad hoc group to discuss some time sync uh, concerns, but uh, they will be working towards, as I understand it, a 2.0 uh, draft um, that ideally will be available for review and comment prior to the November um, plenary, uh, which again should be hybrid um, over in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, and there, are, while there are many TSN activities going on, I'm just highlighting a few here related to GPTP for 802.1 AS. We'll hut stand by some uh, improvements to the Yang data model. I believe that has just completed um, a ballot um, for a sponsor ballot, or at least it's ready to go to sponsor ballot, uh, the comments that are being completed, um, and the inclusive terminology. Uh, as well as some needed efforts specifically benefit for the 10 base T1S space because of the um, um, shared environment that T1S provides and what they call the mixing segment. Um, it's effectively half duplex Ethernet once again. So having GPTP support 
um, I have to protect my environment properly is what ASDS is, is looking to do. And they're uh, still early days, uh, relatively, I guess their second um, interim meeting that they've participated in. So I don't have a lot of other actually updates right at the moment. Um, obviously, there's still quite a bit going on in single pair Ethernet on the 8.3 side uh, around uh, 8 uh, 10 base T1M, which is effectively improvements to the mixing segment for 10 base T1S. Um, ch improved channel definition, improved definition of how power will be de delivered. There's ongoing efforts to define what effectively is 100 base T1L effort. And of course, there's efforts in beyond um, 10 gig single pair Ethernet. So those efforts continue in those interim processes, though I don't have a substantial update to give. What I do want to highlight here is um, our plug fest for 10 base T1S that we were aiming for September has been moved to December. This is on, this is happening uh, December 5th through 9th. Um, again, the continued focus will be on the noise immunity of the channels uh, with uh, various link partners participating from the plug fest. Um, so it, it's that, and it's also stress testing of the PLCA environment in these uh, high noise, high uh, channel insertion loss environments. Uh, we won't be pursuing a lot of conformance testing. Uh, so while we're developing um, our half duplex testing support, PMA, PCS, PLCA, those won't be part of this plug fest, but look for that in 2023. Um, and we will be making our testing solutions available, um, leveraging what we've done for our APL and, and T1L efforts. Um, just a little bit more on the plug fest. Um, I would have hoped by this meeting I could announce the OEM that's supporting us, but there is an OEM supporting this activity um, that is likely to be announced this week. Um, that's covering the majority of the costs of the event. So the participants are just asked to support catering. Um, and obviously we, we, we very much would like to see people in person. So most uh, everyone will be traveling on site to our facility here in Durham. Um, and again, uh, whether it's a prototype or a product that's shipping, uh, either is fine. Um, this is all going to be under confidence, provided um, reports back to participants. Uh, there is uh, a desire to see a white paper uh, published in some form, but that's still to be discussed with the participants. Um, we are looking for basic capabilities from the devices, um, simple counters, um, be they standard Mac or, or equivalent to the Mac counters for um, frame, transmit, and receive, as well as basic generation capabilities. Um, again, we can get into depth with that for, for any who um, are participating. I've had a few calls with parties and we'd like to have more, um, but the, the, the capabilities needed here are not heavy. Uh, we, we, again, are looking at um, the mixing segment uh, environment under various noise stressors uh, and what the effective bit error rate through a packet error rate observation uh, would achieve. Um, we do have our 10 base T1S site up. Um, and certainly I want to acknowledge Analog Devices as one of our first members here for this T1S effort. Look forward to more. Um, if you're interested, feel free to contact us. Uh, Information is at the end of this slide deck. Um, our T1L activity is still ongoing. Um, we now have um, our T1L and APL sites uh, up as well. If you're not familiar with our T1L activities, we've been working with um, uh, the various uh, founders of the APL technology, that's the advanced physical layer, um, the PNO, um, ODVA, OPC Foundation, and FieldCon Group um, to develop their certification um, testing for the data and power requirements. We have test fixtures available, we have software available that folks can use in house. We're working with parties to test their devices. Um, and we're also working with semiconductor vendors to establish um, full IEEE silicon conformance testing. Uh, based on the IEEE standards. So APL only requires validation of requirements for interoperability, whereas the full T1L testing in our groups would provide that, that um, full coverage. So that's why we have the two services. One is just a service for APL testing, and then the 10 base T1L testing service is more focused on low level auto negotiation, PCS, by control, et cetera, uh, related uh, detailed testing uh, of the semiconductor vendors. So again, feel free to contact us if you have interests in the T1L space. And again, whether it's um, BACnet or other potential um, building automation or other industrial uh, use cases, uh, as the standards of continue for 100 base T1L, um, we certainly expect these capabilities to, to grow. <clears throat> this is a recap from the last meeting 
uh, that we had the last webinar, but we have continued to be working with the Open Alliance substantially, um, just got off a meeting with, with one of those groups. Um, we're continuing to provide updates to the test plans for 100 base and 1000 base T1 testing. We have new tooling emerging for 1000 base T1 PCS and five control testing. And we're still in discussions with various parties of how to achieve the same coverage for multi gig. That's the two and a half, five, and 10 G base T1 um, coverage for PCS and five control. So, again, if you have interest there, oop, I missed a correction on that plug test. I'll have to fix that before we post these. But yes, the plug test is December 5th through 9th. Um, we are looking at um, our own plug fests in 2023, but there is an event in early January now, and it was going to be early December um, on the West Coast um, for multi gig. Again, that's run through the Open Alliance, so you'd have to contact those parties. Briefly, we just came back from the ISPCS plug fest. Um, this was a, a relatively successful event for the post COVID world. Um, we had a fair coverage of uh, layer two devices, broadcast devices, telecom. Um, we had uh, certainly uh, the uh, um, GPE devices as well, high accuracy devices, enterprise profile, et cetera. Um, certainly looking to uh, try to understand where the industry interest is in how the ISPCS events can continue. Um, UNH has helped facilitate the technical uh, committee as well as the plug fest uh, for some 10 plus years now. So if, if you participated in ISPCS in the past, um, are considering participating in the future, or just want to understand more about what ISPCS is and, and what it might offer you, feel free to reach out um, and we can share more uh, details on, on how ISPCS could help you. There is some discussion underway of, of how it might reorganize moving forward since there are many uh, industry focused uh, 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 conferences these days. Uh, ISPCS generally has evolved from the 1588 standard body itself with many of the participants there coming from that um, entity um, helping to drive the plug fest and just general adoption of 1588. So it's a bit broad, as you can tell from the scope, um, whereas many other industry forums are very specific to telecom usage or, or other use cases. Still, I think it's beneficial and it's beneficial to see that mix uh, across the lines. So again, if you have thoughts there, we'd love to hear it because we're trying to understand when to have the next conference, where to have the next conference and exactly where the main interest is, whether it's technical reviewed um, conference papers rather than you know the slideware that we often have in some of these other events. These are actual you know journal papers that get reviewed and then also presented with some slides. So there's, there's a little bit more technical meat to some of these uh, activities. Uh, and the plug test is, as well is also somewhat uh, unique to the industry. So certainly interested in your feedback on that. Um, you might not be aware of P1952, but in brief, this is a still new, um, still very much in discussion and not yet in draft uh, standard for resilient uh, PNT, positioning, navigation, and timing. Um, I do have an engagement with the Department of Homeland Security to help support this effort when they come to a point of trying to develop a test specification for this. So if you have an interest in resilient PNT, if you're participating in P1952, please consider participating in the IEEE Conformity Assessment Program or ICAP effort. We'll be forming a committee of experts um, looking for input as the draft in P1952 emerges trying to understand how can we test this, how can we verify the resilience levels that are expected of these devices. So again, I'm the touch point for this, but I'm certainly not the font of all information. Uh, we need the experts to help give us guidance. Um, we might have some decent understanding on the timing side, but uh, at least from my perspective, I definitely need uh, the support from the industry here on the position and navigation side. I would expect parties such as Spirant, Aurolia, and others to be participating here as well. Um, again, on the ICAP side, just a reminder, we have this ongoing effort with the uh, Committee of Experts in this uh, particular Power Profile certification effort to review and accept um, this test suite specification for the Power Profile. That is continuing, um, hoping to have that concluded before the year's out. Um, as we do have um, ordinary clocks completed, uh, transparent clocks, uh, pilot testing is, is coming to a close. Um, boundary clock testing might continue into next year. Just uh, given this nature of things, but we will be getting certification on OCs at the very least, as soon as the validating process is completed on these documents. 
so much activity. We are the North American host for the ORAN Alliance. Um, we're working with AT&T, DISH Networks, and others, and we have multiple uh, parties participating. We're also coordinating with um, Powder from University of Utah and Rutgers uh, Cosmo uh, uh, activities with the NSF um, to host this plug fest. Um, this is in parallel to some other activities that are going around, along in the ORAN Alliance globally. Um, but the, our focus here is to establish end to end interoperability test beds, align a little bit with the Linux Foundation's activities, and also uh, try to offer as, uh, as much S plane validation work as we can uh, during this plug test. This will occupy the majority of November. It's a little bit late to get involved, but if you're interested and not yet involved, please feel free to reach out. We have a planned call actually. Um, this afternoon, and you know, we're looking to to try to finalize the participants here uh, in the coming few days. Um, Ethernet Alliance, there's plenty of activity. Uh, there was a plug fest planned that got pushed off due to some shipping delays, some of the test measurement equipment that's now targeting for the first half of May 2023 for another high speed networking plug fest. Um, obviously, in the telecom spaces, 25 gig and faster is what all those folks are using for their S-plane measurements, by and large. 10 gig is slow uh, for their needs. Um, so working with the EA for HSN still has uh, value even in these timing spaces. And it, it should also be highlighted again that if you're a member of the Ethernet Alliance, I encourage you to participate with the SPE committee as they discuss exactly what plug tests or validation or certification efforts are needed for single pair power over ethernet, sometimes power over data line or poodle, um, but single pair power over ethernet or SPOE is the preferred term these days. Um, so feel free to uh, reach out to that organization to get involved there. Uh, we're actively uh, assisting uh, the EA in these topics. New one, um, this has come up somewhat recently with the uh, Open Compute Project, the Time Appliances Project um, has been underway for some, several years now. Um, they have uh, several open source hardware elements. Uh, most notably, they've helped develop the data center PTP profile, and they've helped uh, develop an open source time card. Um, now, the next call for this particular group happens to be next week. Um, again, it's open to anyone participation. So if you're interested, feel free to get involved there. But one thing that they're starting to look at is actually defining a standard for this time card that it's under review by SA. If the PAR is approved, which it has not yet been, it would be P13, I'm sorry, 3335. Um, all the IEEE numbers just roll off the tongue. A standard for the architecture and interfaces for a time card. And again, this is not a network card. This is not something that pushes PTP or NTP to or from the network. This is just a time reference that has well-defined APIs for the host operating system. Um, that has uh, some stable references, expected capabilities, if you will. Um, the particular card shown here is a single GNSS input, or GPS input, if you will. Um, they have already a version two um, card that has a dual GNSS. Um, and again, part of the reasons for this, going back to the P1952 topic, resilient PNT sometimes requires solutions that aren't utterly dependent on GNSS. Sometimes having dual GNSS receivers is helpful, dual antennas, different bands, but even that can still be jammed. So having other solutions, whether it's a stable reference that uh, provides the hold over your application needs um, is, is just one of those solutions that, that are needed. And having standards so that people can have multiple suppliers and plug and play, if you will, uh, heterogeneous interoperability is, is what the OCP effort here is, is hoping to achieve. But as it moves into the IEEE, you know, much like with the P1952 effort, more discussion certainly will be able to occur in that venue. Uh, Timingcard.com for more information on that. Now, White Rabbit, I can't in just a few minutes give you the full details of how White Rabbit achieves what White Rabbit achieves. But White Rabbit is the initial term for what in the IEEE 1588 2019 updated standard, standard has been uh, known as. Um, perhaps more um, simply as the high accuracy um, um, specification. So high accuracy in this case, meaning sub nanosecond. We, we certainly can achieve picosecond, picosecond level um, synchronization accuracies uh, with White Rabbit. Um, CERN initially developed it um, to help make the Large Hadron Collider actually function. 
uh, but obviously it has many other use cases that um, uh, various scientific and, and other uh, industries have adopted. Um, but it's been all this time, you know, uh, an early uh, open source effort promulgated by CERN, eventually standardized by the IEEE 1588. But these open source hardware elements, elements and open source um, uh, software elements um, have some additional needs, which, which I'll address uh, on the next slide here. But at the very basic level, it is meant to be standards based. Um, the White Rabbit open source code at the moment is evolving towards uh, compliance with the latest 1588 standard. Um, and there is a, a you know this deterministic data transfer element akin to TSN capabilities that's desired. Um, and as you can see, uh, it can support large spans, um, large number of nodes, um, depending on, on your needs. And there's financial institutions that make use of this, um, various scientific purposes. It's not just an academic um, little uh, curiosity, if you will. But to support that, there needs to be more involvement uh, from the community. So I had the pleasure of participating in the most recent uh, White Rabbit workshop um, at CERN. And uh, there was announced the White Rabbit collaboration. Um, this is effectively you know, a, a forum that's looking for input from the community, those who use White Rabbit, to um, find ways to help shape the direction of White Rabbit. What's the future uh, trajectory? What are new development needs um, that, that need to be pulled into the group? And also support the, the parties that are doing the review of pull requests and answering of questions from the community. So I, I strongly encourage folks who have any awareness of White Rabbit or interest in sub nanosecond timing synchronization to, to look into this White Rabbit collaboration further and potentially participate. As shown here, it's just an early um, idea of how the structure might be established, where you know, first there'll be boards and technical committees and steering committees for certain projects and you know, testing and calibration efforts, which I'll speak to uh, more uh, coming up here. Um, but this is very much in the formation stage, very much in the information gathering stage. So if any of this hits close to home for your interest, um, please consider going to uh, white-rabbit.tech to register your interest so that the folks trying to coordinate this principally from CERN can reach out to you and understand how your interest and needs can align with what the collaboration is looking to achieve. So two last things before we get into the Q&A topics. Um, one, in the time since we last talked, we did finally have our planning grant meeting for the IUCRC from the NSF, uh, so many acronyms, that's the US's National Science Foundation. IUCRC is the Industry University Collaborative Research Center. Um, and the center that we're working to establish here is the Center for Digital Factory Innovation, the CDFI, um, working with Georgia Tech. And uh, um, I will get this wrong if I don't look it up properly, but University of North Carolina at Charlotte, I believe, is the uh, collaborators. Uh, current residents. Um, and we will eventually be expanding to other universities, but right now we're soliciting um, input from interested manufacturers, principally in the US, uh, who are interested in supporting effectively industry 4.0 and beyond needs for, for um, digital factory innovation. This is, this is not IOL style interoperability testing. This is research to meet an applied need from industry members. So do please contact us as we are starting to gather um, membership interests from, from various parties who participated in that planning grant. If you missed that opportunity, it's understandable. We can get you more information on that. Um, my week is dominated right now with this uh, NSF uh, POSE submission. That's the platform for establishing an ecosystem, an open source ecosystem. Um, and the intent here is to support this white rabbit uh, test and calibration need. Um, specifically CERN, NICF, NIST, and CSF Energy, um, which is, uh, oh, I completely missed that, CFS in Energy, um, is the Commonwealth Fusion Systems uh, Organization uh, out of Mag uh, Massachusetts. Um, so whether it's advanced fusion research and development for energy, um, advanced scientific topics, um, or, or as mentioned, you know, large financial institutions or, or other needs, distributed databases, anything that has high precision uh, needs, um, benefit from White Rabbit, but there's no ecosystem to support the validation of the solutions as they emerge. Um, 
verifying new hardware solutions, verifying software updates, verifying that there's no regressions. Um, and it so happens that this NFS, NSF pose out of the TIP organization from NSF, a new program just started this year, is entirely meant to support um, open source um, needs in establishing um, the long-term viability of their programs. So while I certainly seek to support uh, White Rabbit's needs, I think in general, the 1588 community, the timing community in general, rely on many open source projects, PTP4L being one notable example, the OCP TAPS timing card being another, where having the open source ecosystem supported with a hardware validation environment where software and hardware um, updates uh, can be tested for continued quality, um, making sure it meets the expected specifications on capabilities, um, accuracy, precision, et cetera, not just it compiled, but that it still works properly. So that's part of our, our goal in establishing this particular uh, open source uh, effort. Uh, more on that should the NSF uh, actually award um, our activities there. And as desired, that does leave us a fair amount of time for question and answers uh, discussion. Um, I will certainly uh, thank you all for, for listening to my quick update. Uh, no doubt I touched on only briefly uh, particular areas of interest to you. So the floor is now uh, to whomever has the first question or whomever would like to come off mute uh, to ask more detail um, or any other uh, specific topic you have on the top of your mind. The most fun we can have in these events is to have some discussion of, of where we're seeing problems and where we have needs. So I do encourage any stray thought you may have to uh, feel free to, to come out and, and share your ideas with us. I won't call on some that I see and recognize, uh, but. Hello, Bob, says Mike here. I have a question. Do, yes. do you think you will perform sooner or later tests on the upcoming standards on security, namely MaxSec security? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, we do have MaxSec coverage in one of our groups here at IOL, except unfortunately it's from the, I may have this wrong, from the 2013 uh, standard version. Um, so while we have the older support that may be of interest for some parties, um, we do recognize we need to update to the more recent standards uh, to be of most interest. Um, but if that initial level of support is of interest, we do have that today um, and certainly can grow um, to the future. But MaxSec is definitely of interest. Um, we, we presented at, N, at um, ISPCS um, an NTS uh, solution, um, or at least performance study for, for that technology. NTS <clears throat> is the NTP timing security. Um, in the PTP space, the likely solution that 1588 will develop will be based on NTS. Uh, but we also do have the authentication TLV um, uh, implemented as an open source contribution that we can make available. Um, but I understand your your interest is is likely first and foremost MaxSec. Would would that be accurate? Yep. Yeah. And then mainly mainly with an with an uh, application use case for automotive uses use cases. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially, um, you know about uh, TC seventeen which is recently starting at, at, at uh, Open Alliance. That's what I was just going to ask if if that was the right venue to carry on this conversation for those in okay. the Open Alliance. Okay, but, but yeah. just bring starting a discussion. Otherwise, it's so silent in this room. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. But as you mentioned, um, often the automotive cases have particular needs. So hopefully uh, TC17 can address that. And I hope our teams can contribute there. Um, especially if there's anything we can leverage from our pre-existing work. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up because uh, we can't be everywhere. This And this again is entirely why I find these discussions um, possible, um, beneficial, um, hopefully valuable to those of you participating because whether it's uh, 1952 where, you know, resilient uh, timing in a, a, a and PNT, this, this topic is not only about GNS or GPS. This could be using PTP to deliver uh, resilient timing um, or other terrestrial radio solutions. Um, but our minds always go to some sort of satellite-based uh, timing delivery here. Um, but 
you know, whether it's the automotive needs for security. Um, the other area I would mention there that I wish I had a solution turnkey for, but um, secure device authentication. Um, uh, the exact 802.1 specification won't come to my memory, but that's another area that I have interest in our automotive efforts uh, supporting. Uh, any other uh, questions, please? Martin. Hi, Bob. Um, you mentioned something about uh, uh, establishing a end-to-end -end interop um, interoperability test bed for the ORAN Alliance. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Is that something that would be um, housed at uh, at IOL, or is it something that's so big that it's kind of you know a network kind of thing that's you know pieces of it are in various uh, locations? What what do you envision for that? That's all a very fair question. Um, our involvement with ORAN is fairly recent. Um, we participated with at and event uh, this spring. Uh, we're the host uh, this fall. Um, we are, um, to, to summarize how the ORAN Alliance plug tests have, have happened, and, and these are all public events. Uh, you can go to their archives. You can see what they've done at previous events. They tend to call them a POC fest, P-O-C fest, proof of concept fest. So they'll, they'll have some various parties come together at a venue to demonstrate a particular use case or capability, um, something that can help feed into the specification or, or testing effort that ORAN is, is working towards standing up for their badging and, and certification efforts. Um, while that will be happening this fall, we seek to have a longer term test bed at our facility that we can house much like we do for other parties, Linux Foundation is just one of them, where we have uh, on site, you know, a, a test bed that um, entities can um, access remotely. They don't physically have to be at our facility, um, but you know, whether it's uh, having um, reconfigurable elements of our software or our network configuration, or our teams here support their needs um, for scheduled testing, we, we can certainly um, support um, any particular investigation into the end to end test bed um, there. Um, we do have several RUs, um, and I believe we now have confirmed DUs and CUs participating in, in the event for the fall. So we have a full um, test that we could stand up, but to, to stress what I've seen in other venues, um, th there's a lot of effort to do this, right? And, and there's a lot of customization that still occurs to support particular uh, environments. Um, we hope to have multiple core network uh, supports, whether it's um, the 5G Super Blueprint efforts, um, Magma, if it matures to a suitable level. But we've also had um, conversations, um, and uh, as it might be delicate, I'll simply say with large cloud providers um, so that we could work with how they envision providing cloud connectivity um, to the edge, right? So some of our test bed might be at our facility, some of it might be hosted in various cloud services, uh, if that hopefully answers your question, Martin. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, actually, let's uh, let's talk about this offline. Yeah, happy to. But uh, again, the, the the element why I raised this here is I could talk about everything the lab does, and you know, that, that's interesting. But why is it relevant to SPE or TSM? Uh, just to highlight that, if if it's a little bit outside of your normal work for for some of you on the call, um, there is absolutely an element of TSM in the front hall connectivity to these um, 5G uh, devices. And so whether it's the ORAN Alliance activities or um, the telecom infrastructure project with their distributed gateway uh, specifications, these devices are high-speed ethernet with um, TSM capabilities. In some cases, simply uh, preemption capabilities and some form of time sync. Typically not the GPTP standards from 802, but the ITU 8275.1 standards. Um, but again, the, this timing connection, it's permeating, of course, uh, everywhere, whether it's in, in the telecom space where it is and always has been heavily used, um, or industrial automation, uh, financial services, uh, any sort of data center uses. If you're talking large scale distributed databases, um, time sync is critical there. And we will have some, um, I want to, I don't want to say dog and pony, but I'm going to say dog and pony shows um, at the end of the ORAN uh, workshop, Martin. And it may be 
Um, there may be some expectation of ORAN Alliance members only for those, but we may have an opportunity after that to discuss with the press as well. Okay, I'd be interested, thank you. That would be um, after Thanksgiving, just as heads up, first week of December, into the first week of December. Other questions? I will um, just touch on this T1S topic again. Um, this is a little bit unique for us that we had um, some various OEMs interested in supporting this. Um, we were, it was actually through one OEM's effort that they connected us to another OEM who could help support this. So I just wanna highlight um, while everyone's competitive, there is a collaborative need to support growth of validation test beds, validation services. So we're appreciative of that. Um, I, I wish I could say the OEM in particular here, we're just waiting on contracts to be finalized, but this information should be going out very shortly. Um, we do expect uh, three to four companies, hopefully more, um, to participate uh, and help contribute to um, our growing test bed as we look to go beyond just uh, this sort of um, stressed channel and PLCA stressed testing environment. Um, these test plans will be something that we'll be making available um, post event and whether that's contributions to the open alliance or something's just specific um, for this use case um, will remain to be seen but there is within the open alliance it has to be a group called tc14 that looks at this and, and there is a uh, quite a extensive amount of effort in those spaces I'm sorry I don't recognize everyone on the call, um, but I, I'm sure there's areas that I have not gone into sufficient detail to satisfy your curiosity. So please feel free to either type a question um, or, or take the mic. Well, folks consider that, maybe I can ask a, a general question when it comes to timing, um, how many here in some way make use of open source software um, as part of your timing solution, whether it's PTP4L or, or something else, if anyone cares to uh, share that information or, or concerns you might have of using open source, especially given you know, security concerns or viability of, of the open source as uh, suitability for your product. You can also ask if there's a topic you were hoping to hear more about that I didn't get to, please let us know. Um, Mara, do we have a poll or do we, or, or will we just reach out to participants? We do not have a poll, but we certainly can send one out after. Um, I have, I, I do have a poll that we sent last time that we can certainly, um, I don't think we got a ton of feedback, so we'll be happy to relaunch it on, on services that you would be most interested in for testing. Um, and then um, obviously some next forum ideas. We always like to send that one out as well. So I'm happy to send those out. If I'd love to get some feedback from folks on, on either one of these. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mara. Yes, thank you. So, you know, th there's obviously you know only so many questions we can ask in these polls. Um, if you don't have an opportunity either through um, Q and A session here, um, or um, or through the poll, uh, feel free to reach us um, uh, offline. Uh, email um, will certainly work, uh, so that we can try to address your questions. Um, Michelle Wismant uh, and Mike Dotting here are are highly highly capable folks who helped uh, Jason and I not drown too badly with uh, all the various uh, industry efforts we have. So feel free to include uh, Michelle and Mike in any outreach that you have, please. Um, maybe 
I don't like doing this, but uh, if it's not met um, uh, in any sort of uh, putting you on the spot uncomfortably late, um, Ravi, do you have any comments on the various IEEE ICAP activities and what this group um, should know about? Oh, thanks for that, um, Bob. Um, uh, and thanks for covering on the 1588 power profile um, and, and 1952. Um, I think these are two imminent programs that we are trying to launch uh, where we will um, not only have formal testing um, to be performed by IEEE recognized test labs where UNH will eventually uh, become one, at least for the 1588 power profile at this point in time, they are uh, a recognized test facility. Um, <clears throat> and then um, the 1952 program, we are sort of in the process of uh, scoping that out. Um, we would very likely be putting out a call for participation uh, to form a conformity assessment committee that would be uh, tasked with um, uh, reviewing um, creating, developing, reviewing, and approving a test plan for 1952, um, as well as um, uh, advising IEEE on, on the certification process to be employed. And, and for those who um, don't know Ravi, Ravi Sabramanian, ah, Sabramanian, sorry, is uh, the director of the IEEE ICAP effort. Um, so I appreciate your uh, participation here. And yes, I, I look forward to this effort. Um, I do think it is um, going to take a little bit of time to get the draft uh, to a point where we can start doing uh, the conformity assessment uh, work. But I did have a discussion with various industry leaders, uh, uh, Heiko and, and Doug from Meinberg and, and others at ISPCS, just to start laying the, the groundwork for trying to get the committee of experts to get supported um, by at least um, you know the timing experts um, which I, I think we'll readily have um, hopefully we'll we'll see similar um, support from uh, from others in the PNT community that's the hope <clears throat> yep yep indeed indeed well, folks, um, I don't want to keep you for um, 10 minutes if we don't have 10 minutes worth of Q&A to go through. Um, if there is anything on your mind um, and you're not comfortable uh, discussing it with the group here or having us discuss it, you can certainly ask a question anonymously. Uh, we don't need to get into the whys and wherefores of, of the nature of your question. Um, but if there's something we can uh, better address for the next um, uh, topic, uh, next webinar rather, which I believe would be um, mid-December, um, hopefully not too close to the holidays so that we, we all get some of your attention. Um, we'd be happy to try to focus on that. Um, and uh, yeah, the, there is, um, I see some of the poll results coming in and, you know, obviously high interest on SPE and automotive and TSN uh, potentially for industrial. Um, there, there is activity in the industrial space for sure. Um, I just can't give all the updates in the world here. <coughs> Um, but uh, when it comes to um, the, the TSN activity, I th think here it is, the, the 6802 effort, as this advances to a working group, as that uh, industrial TSN profile um, finalizes, um, there's certainly going to be concerted effort um, that I seek to participate with, with others in the industry, um, likely similar folks from the advanced physical layer effort, the various industry automation um, organizations um, to try to develop a common testing and potentially certification for industrial TSN solutions. So that that is uh, slowly moving forward. Um, and as I have more updates for that, I, I certainly will be able to give them. But uh, in the interest of um, having 10 minutes back to your day, let me, um, let me just again, thank you all for participating. I hope some of these various topics are of interest. Um, if, uh, if, if there's anything specific, whether it's a little bit more depth on some technical challenges, um, you know, Michael mentioned the, the potential need for MACSEC. If, if you're not familiar with what MACSEC is and why we might want to test it or what challenges that presents, you know, we can perhaps get into that. But I, I'm just as, as equally like uh, happy to hear um, how, how you're approaching some of these challenges. And if, if there's something I'm not raising, 
that either we should be addressing or a solution you're aware of that perhaps we're not, um, this is the forum to have that open discussion. So I, I very much encourage that level of free thinking. Um, if something comes up between now and our next webinar, hopefully you can raise it then. Um, or feel free again to uh, contact us um, and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you as, as promptly as we can. But with that, I, I appreciate everyone's attention um, and we will hopefully be in touch uh, in the coming weeks and months. Thank you and uh, have a good day.